Hey everyone and welcome back to Zero Escape 999. Last time we made our way out of the operating room and Clover is not doing quite so well. She's very concerned that Snake might be dead and from what we know from the submarine ending... <sighs> so let's get going. Let's get out of here. They left the operating room. The hallway took them around several corners and past several doors but they were all locked. Until at last, the final door was hidden in a corner of the hall. Junpei grabbed the handle. As he made to push it open, a voice stopped him. The voice came from behind him and belonged to neither Seven nor Clover. Junpei! He spun around. June? He saw someone running toward him from the other end of the hallway. There were three people coming toward Junpei and his companions. Santa, Lotus, and June. They pulled up short in front of Junpei, breathing hard. Whoa! What the hell is this? What are you doing here? What? But we didn't... Before he could finish, Clover spoke. Hey guys, could you come take a look at this? She was standing near the end of a small hallway that branched off to the right. The rest of them ran over to her, curious as to what she'd found. There was something on the wall at the end of the hallway. A map of the ship's interior. It said Sea Deck in the upper left corner. It was, they assumed, a map to the floor they were on. Door 7 and... Door 8. The map confirmed what they already knew. Both doors eventually led to the hallway where they had found themselves. Yep, and we determined this, in fact... Back when we first got the map out of door three. Uh, the map led us to the door at the bottom right of the hallway, in fact. So this very same hallway. Which means we know what's coming next. In fact... Yeah, isn't that what I said? We aren't going to be split up permanently till we find door nine. We might get separated for a little while, but we'll see each other again. Otherwise, we won't be able to open door nine. That's how the nonary game works. Junpei would look to the map of the ship's interior again. As he looked more closely, his surprise and excitement gave way to weariness. And he's figured it out as well. One by one, the others saw what he'd seen. They moved as one for the door. He pulled the map of the ship's interior off the wall, put it in his pocket, and followed the others. The six of them stood in front of the door, arrayed in a semicircle. Santa stepped forward. He took hold of the door and spoke without looking back at the other five. Ready? I'm gonna open it. Slowly, all five nodded their silent assent. With a deep breath, Santa threw open the door. I don't know why you're so cautious about this. We know what's waiting for us. They poured through the doorway and into the room. Even without looking around, each one of them knew where they were. They were just where the map had said they would be. The same room they'd been in not so very long ago. The tremendous central hospital room with empty beds from wall to wall. Crap. Well, we expected this. And we have the Jupiter key. And I assume June's group got another key, maybe two as well, if we're lucky? How many keys did you get? What keys did you get? I see. I believe I understand what you're saying. The six of you split into two teams and went through door seven and eight. You solved the puzzles in the operating room in the laboratory and then met one another in the hallway after opening your respective locked doors. He looked like anyone might after only just waking up, but it seemed that his brain was working as well as ever. He managed to grasp, summarize, and understand each team's report. At any rate, I feel a bit silly for my little show of altruism. I'm sure you'll be back for me. I did hope you would come back, but I confess I didn't think you'd be back so soon. Ace shook his head with a rueful smile. Well, we saw each other again and we ain't dead, so I'd say that's good enough. Seven smiled. Anyway, I say we get out of this creepy old place. We found the key we need. The key? Ain't that what I just said? I'm talking about the Jupiter key. We found it in the operating room. Right, Junpei? Junpei nodded. 
Ah, the solar system keys. We found a couple more in the laboratory in the kitchen. Which ones did you find? Here, the Earth key and the Saturn key card. Okay, so that's three total that we have. And with that, she pressed them into Junpei's hand. The metal key had the Earth symbol on it, and the key card had the Saturn symbol on it. I might lose them, so it's probably better if you hold on to them. That way it won't be my fault if they get lost. Uh-huh, yep, at least you're honest about that. Junpei felt slightly less than honored. As a group, they now had three keys that had not been used. The Jupiter key, which had been found in the operating room. The Earth key, which Lotus had just handed to Junpei. And the Saturn key card, which Lotus had also just handed to Junpei. Junpei tucked away the new keys into his pocket. Jun spoke up. The Jupiter key is supposed to be for the door at the end of that long straight hallway, right? Yeah. If the map's right, then it connects to the central staircase. Which I believe we've seen before, but I love this map a lot for some reason. Long hallway they're referring to being the ones heading to the east from here. Yeah, leads all the way back to the central staircase. Then next to the stairs... Wait. They were the first words anyone had heard out of Clover in quite some time. Her face suggested they weren't going to be very happy words. What about door three? Look, you saw the map, right? It's the same as seven and eight. It just leads us back to the big hospital room. There's no point in seeing what's on the other side of that door. Not quite true, Seven. Uh, I happen to know that there's a key back there, though don't ask me how. And we, you also can safely assume that there might be a key back there. There is a point. At least there is for me. Oh, that too. There were tears in her eyes, but she glared at Seven as hard as she could just the same. She looked very much like a frightened puppy. There wasn't a man alive who could have resisted those eyes. Seven looked everywhere in the room except at Clover and muttered coughed apologies. Uh, uh, muttered and coughed apologies under his breath. Yeah, you're right. I'm I'm sorry. Snake might be on the other side of door three. Clover nodded once. The next person to speak was Ace. Very well. I'll be coming with you then. I've had a nice long rest. I think it's time I was up and about again. So, Seven, you'll help me, won't you? Ace, seven is eight, plus Clover is twelve is three. Huh? Me? Junpei did the calculations quickly in his head. Four plus one plus seven is twelve, one plus two is three. It looked like seven was doing them too. At last, he gave up. Damn, well, I guess that's how it's gotta be. So I'm going with you, huh? Yes, you are. Alright, let's get moving. And so it was decided that Clover, Haste, and Seven would discover what lay beyond door three. Oh, Clover, I'm so sorry in advance. Oh, this is not gonna be good. Okay, we're heading out. Be careful. Whoa, didn't think I'd be hearing that from you, Lotus. Don't let it go to your head. I'd be in trouble if the three of you bought it. The rest of us can't open the nine door. Aw, oh, the truth comes out. Seven nodded as if this answer made much more sense and pulled the lever on the red. Alright, have fun, you three. I can't even make a joke like that without making myself sad because I know what's back there. We know what's back there. Okay, let's go. The door opened and Ace, Clover, and Seven jumped through it. Six, seven, eight... After exactly nine seconds, the door closed noisily. All right, we should get moving too. Huh? Get moving? Where are we going? Everyone except Lotus seemed rather confused. <laughs> it would be a waste of time to just sit around, wouldn't it? Let me explain. I get it. We're gonna see if we can get anywhere interesting with the Jupiter key. Yes. If we're lucky, we might find Snake. Not a bad idea. They're at the end of the hallway lined by individual hospital rooms. The Jupiter symbol is engraved on the keyhole. Alright Junpei, open it if you please. 
Yeah, haunt it. Junpei pulled the Jupiter key out of his pocket and slid it into the keyhole. He twisted. With a nice sharp click, he felt the door unlock. Okay, so it got unlocked manually then in the submarine ending. All right, ready guys? Junpei's companions nodded. He nodded back and then slowly and quietly opened the door. Inside was exactly what he expected to see from the map of the ship's interior. They were in a tremendous hall, almost like a ballroom with a massive central staircase. Great, back to the beginning. You sure this is a good idea? What do you mean? Oh, well, we already searched every inch of this room, didn't we? Yeah, but we didn't have the solar system keys that we have now. I'm asking you if there's any reason we came back here. Of course. Of course there's a reason. Man, sometimes they can't tell if you're smart or just lucky. Huh? This. Junpei pulled two things out of his pockets. The Saturn key card. And the Earth key. Santa cocked his head to one side like an inquisitive bird and looked at them. After several long moments, during which it became apparent that Santa had no idea what the cards meant, June took pity on him. Santa, really? Come on. Don't you remember, Santa? On Sea Deck, where we are now, there was a big elevator behind the stairs, remember? And next to the elevator, there was a card reader with a Saturn symbol on it. And on A Deck, on the door to the left, there was a keyhole, a keyhole with the Earth symbol on it, I think. So the two keys that Jumpy has should let us use the elevator and the door on D A deck, huh? Yes, that's right. June smiled, pleased with herself. So did Santa. All right, I got it. Let's get started then. What do you say we split into two teams? Lotus and I will search the Earth one, so you two can search Saturn, all right? Sounds good. Junpei handed the Earth key to Santa. Then let's get exploring, see what's down there. They decided that their initial search should be brief, only 10 minutes. They'd meet back near the staircase once they were done. Junpei and Jun headed for the elevators. Sure enough, there was a card reader bolted to the wall next to the left elevator. He lined up the Saturn keycard and swiped it through the reader. Where does this elevator go, I wonder? A light on the upper left corner blinked to life. Great. Looks like it's working now. Alright, now how do I call the elevator? There was a single button to the right of the elevator door. On the button was the upside down triangle, the universal symbol for down. There didn't appear to be an up button. Hmm. Junpei pushed it. He didn't have much of a choice. So we're on C deck now, right? Yeah, we should be on C deck. So if that goes down, it'll go down to D deck or the bottom of the ship. It, it opened! Look, Junpei! Jun's voice was excited, but Junpei could hear a tinge of anxiety. Sweet, it opened. Let's get going. He grinned at Jun and stepped toward the open door. As he was about to set foot in it, he felt a hand on his arm. Wait! What? I'm not really... Oh, I just... Oh, gosh. Junpei was at something of a loss. What's up, Jun? What could she possibly be so frightened of? June was probably afraid of... Alright, I believe I've mentioned before that Uchi Koshi, the writer and director for the Zero Escape series, is uh, infamously horny. So you bet we're going to be picking the very, very fun route for this. Being locked up alone with a boy, clearly. After a little thought, Junpei decided that she had to be nervous about being locked up in such a small space alone with a boy. In a way, it was kind of cute. Very demure, you could say, he thought. Still, even though it wasn't exactly roomy in the elevator, they weren't going to be pressed up against one another. At least they didn't have to be. Still, it was making her nervous. Junpei couldn't help but think how innocent she was. Oh my god, I'm going to kill him. Come on, let's go. Again, he stepped toward the elevator. And again, he felt himself restrained. I said, wait a minute. Why? Aren't you afraid, Junpei? Afraid of what? 
Well, I've never, you know. She'd never been in an elevator with a man alone before? Even so, she still seemed awfully alarmed. I might get wet. Here we go. <sighs> what? Down there, I'd get soaking wet. God, it's... It just gets worse, trust me. And it just, it reads like a bad porno and it's really funny. God. Well, I mean, of course you would. That's the way it works. I mean, I've never heard of anyone getting soaking wet somewhere else. That's, that's true. You don't mind? Mind what? Getting wet. I don't know how long I'm going to be able to do this. Oh no. I can't keep up the voices when I'm giggling. Oh, I'm such a child. Well, I don't know. I think I'd probably, you know, like it. Costume, be yourself, right? God, they're having completely different conversations. Oh, I'm, it's so good. Really? I mean, I kind of think any guy would do the same thing, you know? What happens, happens, right? If you get the chance, you just gotta go for it. That's what a man's supposed. oh my god. That's what a man's supposed to do, I guess. You're so cool, Jumpy. I really admire you. Oh, that doesn't really seem like the sort of thing you gotta admire someone for. I'm, I'm really scared. Yeah? I mean, like you said, you've never done it before. Yes. So I don't think I'll be able to last very long and then it'll be over. God, no. Over? <laughs> yes. I'll go to <laughs> Oh no, I made a mistake. I shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't be doing this, bro. Oh my God. Heaven. <laughs> It feels kind of like you're floating in space and your mind gets all fuzzy like when you pass out. At least that's what I've heard from people who've experienced it. Uh, yes, I've heard that too. Although I don't think the same thing happens to guys. What? Huh? But it would happen to men too, wouldn't it? It would happen to anyone. Once it gets into your body, the same thing happens to everyone. Jude says trans rights. <laughs> Well, I mean, usually it doesn't go inside the man. I mean, generally. Yes, it does. Well, eventually it will. It's not like you really have a choice. Your body will f <laughs> Fuck. This is... I'm trying so hard. I'm so sorry. I'm trying so hard to keep a straight face, but I just can't. This is seriously my favorite conversation in the game. It's so bad. It's so bad. Your body will force you to swallow some of it eventually. What are you trying to do to me? Nothing. I'm not going to do anything to you. I'm just saying that that's what happens. It's a psychological reaction to what you're experiencing. Was, was that really how it happened? It occurred to Junbei that perhaps it was how it worked. Perhaps he'd been mistaken all these years. Had he misunderstand life so gravely? They thought, the thought terrified him. Jun seemed to be entirely oblivious to Junpei's mounting confusion and terror. I know most men probably have larger lungs, but even that, I don't think you could hold your breath for 20 or even 10 minutes. Eventually, you'd have to breathe and then the water would get into your lungs. Yeah, she was talking about drowning because the sh ship's lower decks are flooded. She was talking about drowning the whole time. <laughs> Once that happens, your body won't be able to get any oxygen anymore and you'll start to feel that floaty feeling as you pass out. <laughs> Finally, Junbei understood. He understood what Junbei, uh, what Jun was trying to say and why she was so scared. Yeah, you're right, you wouldn't last very long. See? She was afraid that the only elevator button pointed down. That meant, of course, that the elevator couldn't go any higher than the floor they were on. As he thought about it, Junpei realized he hadn't seen the elevators on A or B decks near the central staircase. All of which meant that the elevator could only convey them to the lower the decks. And the floor below the one they were on, D deck, should be completely submerged. That meant... Hey, wait a minute. This elevator came up from somewhere under us, right? Um, well, yeah, I guess it did. It didn't open right away, but after you press the button... There was a motor noise, like it was moving, and then it opened. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So, take a look inside. Junpei jerked his hand toward the interior of the elevator. It's not wet at all, is it? The walls and even the floor are totally dry. Oh, 
you're right, they are. She looked around the elevator, slightly embarrassed. I mean, to be fair, you were... Your fear was not irrational. Well, let's test it. Test it? Yeah, watch this. Junpei put one foot in the elevator and bent around the corner of the door till he could see the floor buttons. There were only two, E and C. He pushed the E button and jumped out of the elevator. The door slid shut and they heard the grinding of the motor as the elevator car moved down. Bye elevator, have fun! A few moments later, they heard the sound of the elevator door grinding open several floors below. Junpei nodded to Jun and pressed the elevator button again. A few moments later, the elevator returned. The door slid open and just as Junpei had expected, there was no water to be found. See? Junpei couldn't resist puffing out his chest just a little bit. Jun, however, still looked confused. What does that mean? How can the E-deck be safe if the D-deck is full of water? That is a good question. That is a very good question. We went down to the bottom deck or in submarine and that was also dry. Well, here's what I think. The elevator shaft and E-deck must be watertight and separated from wherever the ship's been punctured. Here, let me show you. He pulled out his notebook and pen and sketched out a rough illustration. I see. So, is that why the ship hasn't sunk? The shape of the inside keeps it from all filling up with water. That makes sense. Yeah, I think that's what's going on. Junpei continued talking as he closed his notebook and uh, closed the notebook and slipped it back into his pocket. So I'm gonna go down and check it out. You should you stay here, all right? Um, but. Come on, just do it, all right? He gave Jun's shoulder a reassuring squeeze and hopped onto the elevator. He pushed the E button and the door began to close. Jun looked worried in her eyes, starting back and forth as if she was trying to make a decision when suddenly... I'm, I'm coming with you! Huh? At the last possible moment, Jun dashed forward, turning sideways just in time to slip through the gap between the do closing doors. Junpei jammed his finger against the open button but it was too late. The door had shut and he and June were in the elevator and it was headed down the E-deck. I don't know why you wanted June to stay behind, honestly, Junpei. He was so surprised by June that he didn't even have time to think about what awaited him on E-deck. The elevator stopped and the door slid open. They stepped off onto the floor outside the elevator. Nothing seemed especially unusual. No fish going about their fishy business or jellyfish floating lazily through the water. There was, however, a blowfish. Or at least some, something that looked very much like one. June's cheeks were puffed out and her mouth a tiny, intense frown. Mm. Oh, knock it off. It's just like I thought, this part isn't flooded. Come on, just look around, there's no water here. June looked around nervously then. <sighs> Exhaled. You're right. It's not fl flooded at all. See? But there's a whole lot of water. Yeah, right on top of us. What's gonna happen if the ceiling breaks? I mean, I feel like this ship's probably built pretty dang sturdy for exactly that reason. Jun Junpei thought about that for a moment. Well, we'd probably get really wet. Up there. Huh? At any rate, we should probably go back as soon as we can once we're done looking around down here. Lotus and Santa might already be back, what with all the time we spent being unnecessarily horny. Okay, good idea. Junpei glanced around the room they'd found themselves in. The first thing he noticed was a set of thick iron bars. They ran the length of the room separating the left elevator from the right one. Well, we can't go over there. Right. Then perhaps... In the corner of the room that housed the elevators, Junpei found an opening. He walked up to it and stuck his head around the corner. A long, straight hallway stretched out in front of him. That door at the end of the hallway! There's something There's something written on it! Yeah, let's go have a look. Junpei and Jun set off down the hallway at a brisk clip somewhere between a run and a jog. Looks like the number six door to me! Before long, they found themselves in front of the door. 
On it was a number written in bright red paint. Six. I knew it. This is a numbered door. And indeed, there was a red bolted to the wall right next to the door. Of course, with only two people, there wasn't much they could do with it. Alright, let's head back. Yes! Junpei and Jun turned and headed back to Sea Deck. On their way back, Junpei noticed a map on the wall. As it turned out, it was a burnt map of the ship's interior for, D uh, for E Deck. A burnt map? I want to check out that map real quick. E deck, E deck. Oh, that is burned indeed. Uh. Okay. I am not clicking on that green box. So let's see. Grand staircase is right there. Right on top of the green box. Elevator would spit them out. Probably. They said the elevators were behind the staircase, so they're on the right side. Ah! I think I see where they're at. Uh, to the right of where the green box would be. So that metal bar that we saw is that lower bar sticking out of the right side of the green box. And then door six. Which way is door six? I feel like door six... They said they went a pretty good distance, so I think door six would be all the way down here. Yes, 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 yes. It's the top right door on the top. It's the rightmost door on the top hallway is door six, I think. All right. Awesome. We've got a we've got an idea of what E deck looks like then. So. Next time on Zero Escape 999, now that we are back upstairs, it's time to regroup with Lotus and Santa, and hopefully Ace, Clover, and Seven, and compare our findings. I will see everyone next time for that.